Hi, and welcome to our session on building an interactive machine learning application using both Vertex AI and Looker. I'm Leah Jarrett, and I'm a developer advocate here at Google Cloud, and I'm also joined by my colleague, Sarah Robinson. Before we get into the details, let's talk about why you might want to build an interactive data science application for your team. Well, we know that business users of all different types need access to the results of machine learning models. And we really want to eliminate that bottleneck so that they don't need to go through a data team to get access to the results. We also want to make sure that our data science application has an easy to use and simple UI so that people of all different technical levels are able to interact with machine learning models and get the data that they need to do their jobs. Finally, we want to provide guidance onto how business users should interpret the results of machine learning and also take action on them. So we're making sure that machine learning is having a real influence on business decision making. Now in this presentation, we're going to talk about how Google Cloud can help you build these data science applications. So let's pretend that we are working for a marketing department of an e-commerce company. I might decide to create two different models in Vertex AI. First, I'm going to create a classification model to predict whether or not different users who see an advertisement are likely to make a purchase. Then we're going to create a time series forecasting model to predict our different revenue so we can accurately measure the lift of those campaigns. Now, in order to train our Vertex AI models, we're going to supply it data that's coming from our BigQuery data warehouse. This gives us the scale and reliability that BigQuery offers, so we're able to store and transform and prepare our data for machine learning. Finally, we're going to use Looker to actually create a custom application that our business users can interact with. Using Looker's extension framework, we can customize the UI exactly for our needs, and we'll enable our users to interact with this UI and have the results of their interactions sent back to Vertex AI to create new predictions from our models. Now I'm going to pass it off to Sarah to talk more about Vertex AI. Thanks, Leah. Let's start by looking at what Vertex AI is at a high level. Vertex AI is our end-to-end -end managed machine learning platform on Google Cloud. It's designed to help you with every step of your machine learning workflow, and it's designed for people regardless of ML expertise. So whether you have deep experience building custom models or you're just getting started with machine learning, we have ways that you can use Vertex AI to add to your machine learning applications. So here we can see an overview of all the different products that are included in Vertex AI for each phase of a typical machine learning workflow. We're gonna focus just on a few of these in this presentation, starting with data sets, showing you how to link data in BigQuery to a data set in Vertex AI. Then we'll look at how to train models in Vertex and get predictions on those models. And throughout this presentation, we'll be focused on models trained on tabular data to build both a classification and a forecasting model. Let's start by looking at data, which is usually the first part of any machine learning workflow. So in Vertex AI, you start by uploading a data set, and you do this by selecting the type of data you're working with, along with the prediction task that you'll be solving. In this presentation, we're gonna be working with tabular data, but we also support a lot of other data types. And if your data doesn't fit into any of these categories, don't worry, you can still use Vertex AI to train your own custom models. Next, let's look at a decision framework that I use to help customers figure out which parts of Vertex AI are right for them. The first question to ask is whether or not you have your own training data to use for your model. If the answer is no, we have a set of pre-trained APIs that give you access to machine learning models that have already been trained on lots and lots of data that you can access via a REST API. For this presentation, we're gonna be focused on the right side of this flowchart. We're assuming that you do have your own training data that you wanna to use to train custom machine learning models. The next question to ask yourself is whether or not you're gonna be writing the model code. And whatever the answer is to this, we have tools to support you on Vertex AI. We're gonna be focused on AutoML for training, but you can also use Vertex AI to train your own custom models built with any machine learning framework. Let's take a closer look at AutoML for training. AutoML is a tool that lets you train state-of-the-art machine learning models in less time because you're not required to write any of that model training code yourself. All you do is upload your data to Vertex, select the columns that you're going to be using for training, along with the column that has your label or the thing that your model will be predicting, 
you press a train button and Vertex AI will iterate over different model architectures to find the best one suited for your prediction task. When your model is done training, you'll then get access to detailed model evaluation metrics along with feature attributions. Once you have a trained model, there are a couple options for how to get predictions on that model. The first is you can deploy your model to an endpoint in Vertex AI. And endpoints live in the same place in the UI, whether you train the model using AutoML or your own custom model code. You can also access both types of models via the Vertex AI SDK. You can split traffic between different models, and you can also customize the machine type where your endpoint is deployed. And if latency is less of a concern and you have a lot of test examples that you want to get predictions on, you might want to create a batch prediction job, and we'll show how to do this in the demo. To create a batch prediction, you can do this either in the Vertex AI console or via the Vertex AI SDK. And you'll specify where your data is that you want to get batch predictions on, and then where you want Vertex AI to write the results of those batch predictions. In the demo, we'll be creating a batch prediction job based on data we have in BigQuery. And without further ado, let's take a look at a demo. In this demo, I'm going to be showing how to train two different models using data from BigQuery. We'll train a classification model along with a time series forecasting model. And we'll use AutoML to train both of those models. When the models are done training, we'll look at some evaluation metrics, and then we'll see how we can create batch prediction jobs so that we can then visualize the results of those model predictions in our Looker dashboard. Let's go to the demo. We'll train two models in Vertex AI using our retail data. First, we need to import our data from BigQuery into Vertex. There's a direct integration between Vertex AI and BigQuery. Here, we'll create a data set. This data set will be used to train a tabular classification model. We want to import data from BigQuery, so we'll select here. And this is the BigQuery table we want to use to train our model. It's some data on orders, and we'll use it to predict whether or not a customer will make an order. We'll enter that BigQuery table here. And now we're ready to train a model on this data. We'll train our model using AutoML, which means that we don't need to worry about writing any of the model code. Our target column is made order. This will tell us whether or not the customer made a purchase. Here we'll select the columns we want to use for training. Here we'll want AutoML to maximize the accuracy on our model for the less common class. We're doing this because the percentage of customers who made an order in our data set is much smaller than those who didn't. And with that, we're ready to start training. We'll follow the same process to train a forecasting model to predict sales for different item categories. Here we're using seven days of data to predict what the category sales will be seven days in the future. Now that we've trained two models, let's see how each one performed, starting with our classification model. Here we can see that 77% of the time, our model was able to correctly predict when a customer would make a purchase. We can also see feature importance. This shows us which features signaled our model's prediction the most. In this case, it looks like the advertisement category was the most important indicator of whether or not someone would make a purchase. With our trained model, we can now deploy it to an endpoint to get online predictions. We can also request batch predictions by creating a batch prediction job either in the UI or programmatically via the Vertex AI API. The result of our batch prediction job was written to a BigQuery table. For each row, we can see the percentage likelihood that a purchase was made. Here, it looks like there was a 71% chance that the customer made a purchase. Let's also take a look at how our forecasting model performed. Here we can see some evaluation metrics on our model. When we kicked off our training job, we specified that we'd like test predictions written to a BigQuery table. Let's take a look at that table now. Here we can see the sales predicted by our model compared to the actual sales on that date. Now let's see how to create a batch prediction job looking at one window of our time series data. When we're formatting our data for prediction, we'll pass it a BigQuery table with sales data for our seven-day context window, and then we'll provide the date we want to generate a prediction on. For this model, it's seven days in the future. We'll leave the sales value for that row blank since that's what we want to predict. We can get predictions on as many seven-day time series windows as we'd like. Here we're just showing one for demo purposes. When this batch prediction job completes, we'll see the resulting predicted sales value for the date that we specified. 
In our Looker dashboard, we'll be able to visualize the predictions resulting from both of these models. Thanks, Sarah. So now we understand how to actually create models in Vertex AI and even hit an endpoint to get new predictions. But how do we extend these capabilities so that non-technical business users are able to interact with Vertex AI and analyze the results of those predictions? This is where Looker comes in. So you may already be familiar with Looker's architecture. Looker enables you to create a data model, your single source of truth for all of your different metrics. And this sits directly on top of your data warehouse, so BigQuery in our case. For the data science application, we might create a model where we're actually defining metrics associated with the prediction results coming from Vertex AI. This will allow our business users to explore the results and create visualizations or dashboards and even operational workflows to take action on those results. But how do we actually enable them to interact with that endpoint and create different inputs that feed into Vertex AI? This is where the extension framework comes into play. Looker's extension framework allows you to create custom JavaScript to control the UI for a custom application hosted in the Looker environment. So the great thing about the Looker extension framework is it handles all hosting, authentication, authorization, and gives you access to Looker's APIs, ability to embed Looker components like dashboards and looks. And also we have a set of open source UI components to really accelerate your time to value. This diagram really helps put it into perspective. If you want to go and build a data science application on your own, you have to take care of all of that stuff outside of Looker. But with the extension framework, so much of it is taking care of it for you under the hood. So just to put these two pieces together, first, we're going to create a dashboard using native Looker technology. We'll model the prediction results, we'll explore them, and create a report that business users can use. Next, we'll use the extension framework to actually customize the UI so it's purpose-built for our models and so that users can control the inputs that are fed back into the Vertex AI prediction job. So let's actually see a demo of all of this in action. I'll jump into my data science application so we can see how a marketing person would interact with it. In Looker, I can navigate to my data science application from the left side panel under the Applications dropdown, or if you're using an earlier version of Looker from the Browse dropdown. Now I can see my custom built application for the marketing team to create targeted advertisement campaigns. On the left hand side, marketers are able to control inputs to the model, like selecting users from a certain traffic source, country, gender, age, and previous purchase history. They can also specify what type of advertisement they're planning to run. For example, here we're predicting if we fed an advertisement campaign for accessories through a search channel. On the right hand side, we have our dashboard to actually analyze the results of the model. So here we can see that when we ran the model, we fed in over 65,000 users that had an average age of 53, certain average prior spending habits, and we can also see their uh, geographic location. Scrolling down, we can start to analyze the results of the batch predictions from Vertex AI. So here I can see that 2.6% of our user base was expected to make a purchase. We can also use that information to calculate our predicted campaign cost if we just targeted that 2.6%. And we can slice our likelihood to make a purchase, so that predicted measure coming from Vertex AI, by other fields in the user information, like how many orders they previously made, what their traffic source was, and what their age group was. Next, we can look at the results of our time series forecasting model. So to actually see what our predicted revenue, if we don't do anything, is for the next seven days and see that compared to prior historical sales. Now this dashboard is just like any old Looker dashboard. So as a marketer, I can explore from here, drill in. So I might want to explore and actually send these users who we predict to make a purchase off to an external application to, you know, target them for that advertisement. Now that we understand how a marketer would interact with this application, 
let's start thinking about how we actually went and built this application. Like we said earlier, we built this using Looker's extension framework. So what we did was created some lightweight custom JavaScript to control the UI that we're seeing here. On the left-hand side, I actually used Looker components to create each one of these inputs. Let's see what one of these components might look like. For example, the checkbox group component is used for our first input. Now, I'm a data person and not a front-end developer, and although I did have to learn a bit of JavaScript and React to get everything working appropriately, most of the application was built leveraging these components and working off the extension framework code templates that are available. Now, if a marketer wants to change the inputs to the model, for example, only focusing on people in the US and maybe seeing what would happen if we ran an advertisement for jeans, I can click run and I'm going to have to verify my identity to make sure I have permission to run the vertex model. And then in the extension framework, my code is actually going to send this information to vertex to create a batch prediction job. Now, before Looker actually talks to Vertex, it uses the Looker API to create a BigQuery table that contains one row for each person in that audience we created to predict on. And you can see we're going to have the gene search campaign, which is the fields that the user entered to actually see what would happen if we ran a certain type of advertisement. And on the details of the BigQuery table, we can see that it's set to expire tomorrow so that we aren't storing too much unnecessary information. And also it's named with this long hash. And this is basically a unique identifier for the prediction that we're running. Now, if we open up our extension code, we can see that after the BigQuery table has been created, it's time to make our vertex prediction call. Here we're using Looker's extension SDK to create a post request to Google Cloud AI platform. And in the input, we're gonna specify things like our model ID, the location where this needs to run, and also our input data. So that BigQuery table we just created and our output BigQuery data set. Since batch predictions sometimes take a few minutes to run, we send the user a message on Google Chat when the results are ready with a link to review. Here, we also include the same hash used earlier to bring the user back to the results of the model so that they can use the dashboard to investigate the results. The dashboard itself is just a regular old Looker dashboard that's embedded into our application using Looker's embed SDK. So just like previous Looker API calls we made, this requires just a few lines of code and no authentication needed. We use the embed methods to pass in values for the filters based on what the user has entered on the left. You'll also notice that we have a parameter for our table name. This is the hash that was used to identify the prediction and it's what's going to be used to make sure that we're leveraging the right table that stores the results of the latest prediction results from Vertex AI. Now the great thing about this entire app is that it was simple to build since Looker and Vertex do all the hard parts like model and front end development, deployment and authentication. And my marketers can interact with machine learning all on their own to get data when they need it. Thanks again for joining us today. So we talked about how to build a complete data science application using Vertex AI and Looker. Sarah walked us through the Vertex AI platform, including how to create, train, and deploy models. And I showed you how to explore the results of those models in Looker and create your own custom application using Looker's extension framework. So to get you well on your way to creating your own data science application, we have listed some resources like Looker and Vertex AI training courses and labs. We also included some other next sessions that might be relevant to what we talked about today. So thanks again, Sarah, for joining us and talking about Vertex AI. And thank all of you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this session and that you enjoy the rest of next 2021.